Can you touch your toes? Can you put your palms on the ground? Can you hug your legs? Well, if you answered no, I got some stretches for you. Come this way. Literally, all you need is a wall. Check this out. All you do is lay down and stick your legs up in the air and you straighten your legs. It's okay, only go as far as you can feel the stretch. So if you have to start out here or even out here or maybe here, who knows where you have to start? Probably somewhere right here. But instead of getting closer to the wall, focus on bringing your tailbone down to the floor, almost by arching your low back, but keep your ribs down. Try that. And also after 30 seconds of this, 30 seconds of this, then 30 seconds of this. And if you can, why not do a full split? Wait, you can't do a full split? Next video. Have you ever tried to do the middle splits and were never able to? Well, here's how you can get into it. But in order to get your middle splits, you need to stretch more than just your inner thighs. You also need to stretch your hamstrings and your hip flexors. But by far the best way to get a skill is to just keep attempting it in a way that is not painful. So all you have to do is lower yourself into it just like that and hold. But what if your shoulders aren't strong enough? I have a solution for you. Check this out. Basically, all you do is use a wall. Lean all the way out with your feet up against it and scoot yourself back up against the wall, spreading your legs, just like this. And after a little while of this, you can scoot forward and forward. And this is an easier, more relaxing way to stretch your splits. And maybe I'll drop a stretching routine. And splits. Yo! Does your hip ever randomly pop? Maybe it pops all the time. Well, I've got some stretches to help. There are three main ligaments that keep your hip joint connected to your pelvis. And when the muscles around them get tight, annoying or uncomfortable things can happen like snapping and popping. So the solution is to stretch the muscles around your hip. By doing this right here, you're stretching your hip flexors. Keep your knee right over your ankle and stretch the other leg behind you with your toes pointed out. Hold that for 30 seconds on both sides, even if it's just the one side that's popping. This one right here also helps a lot. Cross the ankle over the knee and pull the leg inward towards the chest and you'll feel a stretch in your side glute area. After doing that for 30 seconds for both poses, you should feel better. But if you have any excessive popping or snapping, go see somebody who can help you with it. Can you touch your toes? Can you bring your toes up with you? Can you do the splits? Well, if not, I've got two stretches just for you. The two muscles you need to stretch the most for your splits are your hamstrings and your hip flexors. We learned how to stretch our hamstrings up against a wall last time, but this time we're gonna do them both separately. So instead of reaching for your toes, keep your back flat as possible, and you might start here, here, or here. It doesn't matter where you start, it just matters that you do start. Step one further forward and lean to it. You can also tilt your pelvis back or bend the leg and tilt the other way. This stretches different parts of your hamstring. And then to stretch your hip flexors, just put your knee on the ground and have your other knee over your ankle. Hold these stretches for 30 seconds or up to a minute and for best results, pair it with dynamic stretches. Do you know any dynamic stretches? I got you next video. We're all somewhere along our journey to get to our splits. But did you know dynamic stretches also help to get your splits? How do you do dynamic stretches? Well, I'll show you, check this out. Dynamic stretches are super cool because instead of sitting holding a stretch for a really long time and getting bored, you're actually going to be moving. So find a wall to balance against and kick your leg forward, just like that. And you can also reach for your toe. You might not be able to start kicking this high. You might be somewhere down here. It doesn't matter where you start. It just matters that you do start. You can also lean up against a wall like this and kick out behind you. But be careful because you don't want your foot to slip out from under you. This is really helpful for warming up the muscles and I recommend doing it before you do your static stretches. How often should you stretch? To unlock mobility faster, you need to stretch every day or every other day. 
but I maintain my flexibility by just stretching every three days or so. Stretching is not a warm up. In fact, studies show that stretching before you work out can actually lead to decreased athletic ability. So you should stretch at the end of your workout so you don't have decreased athletic ability and your muscles are warm enough that you're less likely to injure yourself and the stretching becomes way more effective. So to maximize your strength or hypertrophy gains, warm up with some cardio or some light weights. And next I'll teach you the most effective way I have found to stretch. If you stretch into pain, your body's natural reaction is to contract your muscles and not get more flexible, which is not what you want. If it's so uncomfortable that you have a hard time holding it for more than 10 seconds or you have to bounce, you've gone too far. But listen to your body. Do you stretch before you work out? You shouldn't. <sighs> Static stretching can actually decrease your athletic performance. Did you know that? but the same does not hold true for dynamic stretching. It's a great way to warm up and stretch at the same time. So here's how you do it. Well, if you're gonna be working legs, focus on those hamstrings with kicks forward, and you can also do kicks back. You might wanna balance on something though. That's your hip flexors and your hamstrings taken care of. You can also do your adductors by kicking out to the side. Basically flailing around like an idiot will help you out a lot. And most people have seen Michael Phelps doing his weird back slaps. Yes, dynamic stretch for the shoulders. But if you do plan on stretching to increase your flexibility, make sure you do it at the end of your workout. Good luck, everybody. How flexible are you? Here are the top five athletic standards of flexibility. Number one, deep squat. Can you touch your hamstrings to your calves without falling over? Number two, can you touch your toes while keeping your knees all the way straight? And number three, can you touch your fingers behind your back on both sides? Number four, hip mobility. Find a surface that's near your hip height, put your ankle on and see if you can get your knee to lay flat. This one's a little bit higher than hip, but it just makes it harder. Both sides. And number five, all you need is a wall. With your back against the wall like this, see if you can get your elbows and your wrists to touch the wall all the way above you without letting your ribs stick out like this. It's easy to do it like that, so you keep your ribs all the way back connected to the wall and touch those elbows and those wrists up. Those are the top five athletic standards of flexibility that I use to test people's flexibility. How many did you get? And hey, remember that just attempting any one of these is great flexibility training. Get to it, let's get flexy, y'all. Can you do a deep squat? Can you do it wide? Can you do it narrow? If you can't do one or more of these, I've got tips just for you. I am not a single percent Asian and not a single percent Slavic. So this is only up to training and lifestyle. There are three ingredients to the deep squat. Ankle mobility, knee mobility, and hip mobility. Today, we're focusing on the ankle. For good ankle mobility, you need to work on tibialis or shin strength and gastrocnemius or calf flexibility. All you need is a wall. Just step your toes against the wall and press down and you'll feel that stretch along the top part of your calf. And for the strengthening of the shins, all you gotta do is lean up against a wall and lift your toes in the air. The further away your feet are, the more difficult it is and do about 10 reps. Next video, we're focusing on hip mobility. The second secret to deep squat mobility is hip mobility. Let's get started. There's actually two different types of hip mobility. There's hip mobility in the glutes like this and hip mobility in the hip flexor like this. Today, we're focusing on the glutes for our deep squat. All you need is the floor. You thought I was gonna say wall. Go ahead and lay down, cross your ankle over your knee, grab your leg and pull it in closer toward your face. You should feel the stretch right here. Or alternatively, you can do the same thing while sitting in a chair and achieve the same results. And the best way to stretch is to hold your pose for at least 30 seconds up to 45 seconds and do it multiple times, just like sets and reps. Here's a fun way to test your hip mobility. Just open your knees about a little wider than shoulder width, keep your back flat, and see how far forward you can go. You will be able to see your progress track more and more and more every single day. Good luck. And next video, we'll cover the knee flexibility. <sighs> 
Can you hold your deep squat without knee pain? Well, here's the final secret to your deep squat gains, rolling transition. If you want the rolling transition hat, the link is in the bio. However, knee strength and mobility are super, super important to the pain-free deep squat. So how do we get there? Let's start with strength. All you need is something to keep your heels elevated up off of the ground so your knees can go further past your toes and you just do body weight squats. With time, you can also add weight onto it. The important thing is for you to get comfortable with your knees past your toes. Check out knees over toes guy, super dope stuff. If you don't have any weights, you can also progress to just minor bends with just one leg. And why not progress to a full pistol squat? But knee mobility is just as important as knee strength. Here's how we train it. One of the easiest ways to train mobility is a really, really delicate split squat where you push your knee forward over the past your toes just like this, and your goal is to get your hamstring to touch your calf. I like to keep all these exercises at around 10 reps and keep it light enough that it's comfortable to do all the way through. You shouldn't be going to failure. And eventually you'll build up the strength to be able to get your knees to go all the way down to the ground and hopefully all the way back up. Everybody should be able to fold in half. So let's talk about the hamstrings. I've already shown you the easiest possible way to stretch your hamstrings using a wall, but now it's time to kick it up a notch. Introducing the why is this spicy stretch. All you have to do is find a surface that is comfortable for you to stretch on. But remember, everybody's different. Start where you have to stretch, anywhere in that area. So once you get there, all you have to do is bring your foot across your body, roll your ankle inward, and then with your opposite hand, reach across your body. Why is this spicy? Hold for 30 seconds on each side. And if you can hold that without discomfort, I don't believe you. Now that you've stretched the outside of your hamstrings, next video will stretch the middle of your hamstrings. Can you fold in half like a book? The average human has this ability, you just have to unlock it. So let's talk hamstrings. I've already shown you the spicy outer hamstring stretch, so let's stretch the middle of our hamstring. And everybody knows that you can reach toward your toes, but let's perfect your form. Open your feet apart a little wider than shoulder width, keep the back flat, and lean forward. But remember, only go as far forward as you can. Everybody's got to start somewhere, and only you know where you need to start. After holding 20 seconds here, go ahead and round your back forward and hold 20 seconds here. And if you don't feel amazing after doing that, do it again. And next video, we'll do inner thighs. Most human bone structures allow us to do the splits, but your muscles do have to catch up. So let's talk inner thighs. All you need is a wall. Just use the wall to find a stretch that feels good for you. And you can also use this as an opportunity to find out whether you like your toes pointed up to the ceiling or out to the side. I prefer it this way, but everybody is different. And the better you get at this stretch, the more uncomfortable this becomes. And I don't like making out with walls, so you can graduate to this position right here push yourself back and you can hold this for at least 30 seconds and you can actually do it multiple times. Take it slow, start where you can, and next video we'll stretch our hip flexors. You actually do have time to stretch. Here's two minutes that'll help. I'm filming this during my lunch break at work so you truly do have the time to stretch. Right here is a hip flexor stretch. 30 seconds right here. And then 30 seconds on the other side. That's a minute so far. Are you following? Now for this you can use a chair, a desk, a ledge. It doesn't really matter. All you do is hold 30 seconds here. And then 30 seconds here. Bam! That's two minutes.